Hi, welcome to Inkscape for Teachers. I'm Jeff Phillips. And in this uh, episode, I won't be showing you how to construct an Inkscape diagram so much as how to use an existing file that I've written here. You see, it's quite uh, complicated looking. It'd probably take me about three weeks to record a video on it. But I'm going to explain a few ways that you can use this as a, re as a resource in the teaching of trigonometry or circular functions. I'll be only giving you a, a, f a few bits of information, but of course every teacher will have their own preferences and why they want to use this file if they use it at all. First thing I'd emphasise is that there are three key values to remember. Root 1 on 2, root 2 on 2, root 3 on 2. I included the square root over the 1 just to make the pattern more obvious, but of course root 1 is the same as 1, so this first value is a half. Angles, there are three key angles, pi and 6, pi and 4, pi and 3 in radians, which correspond to 30 degrees, 45 degrees and 60 degrees. And there are other angles, of course, you know, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, naught, but those ones are more obvious. So as far as students learning key values, these are the, the numbers that they really should commit to memory. And then on, it's up to you how you explain trigonometry. I've got a code here, colour code, red for sine, which is the vertical axis, blue for cos, horizontal axis, purple for tan, which is a line tangent parallel to the y-axis of the side here, going through uh, 1, comma naught. And angles, I've got a colour code there in brown usually, the ones around the outside. Now I'll just zoom in, scroll wheel and mouse up to zoom in. If you wish to use this Inkscape file, I'll include a link to it in the video description. Now, really, once you understand one quadrant, the other three quadrants are all very, very similar. For example, 30 degrees, you can see there's 30 degrees marked here. We measure, from the, obviously, from the, the blue axis, as indicated by this brown arrow, counterclockwise. So sine of 30 degrees would go across to the unit circle, or we look at 30 degrees here perhaps, then go across to the sine axis so it's root 1 on 2 or a half. So sine 30 degrees is a half. Cos 30 degrees, we go to this axis, is root 3 on 2. Tan 30 degrees is root 3 on 3. We continue along to the purple axis. It's as simple as that. If you're asked what, uh, you can ask the students what uh, angle has a sine of uh, root 2 on 2, well we just go to root 2 on 2 on the sine axis and one possible angle is pi on 4, another is 3 pi on 4. So you can use this how you like. One point of interest, I've included angles around the outside here which initially might make you think the, comp the diagram is more complicated, but uh, I think it's worth uh, explaining or mentioning to students. For example, we go from naught to pi on 2 to pi. I always tell kids the, the key line is this horizontal line. We measure everything from there. So pi is the same as 6 pi on 6, or 4 fourths pi, or 3 thirds pi. But if we say, want to go back from here, pi on 6, I'd look at this one, 6 pi on 6. Taking off one of those pi on 6 leaves us with 5 pi on 6. Or if we go back pi on 4, 4 pi on 4, take off one of those pi and 4, and we're back to 3 pi and 4. Or conversely, if we round at pi and we go in another 30 degrees or another pi and 6, well pi is 6 pi and 6, plus another one of them is 7 pi and 6. 4 pi and 4, plus another pi and 4 would be 5 pi and 4. 3 pi and 3, plus another pi and 3 would be 4 pi and 3, and so on. So it's worth thinking of these values in terms of, you know, 3 thirds or 4 fourths or 6 sixths. Another example around here, if we're looking at um, 30 degrees shy of a full circle, well it's 2 pi, which is really 12 pi and 6, coming back one of those pi and 6 to 11 pi and 6. So it's pretty easy to work at all these values. You don't have to complete the whole diagram, you just have to reference things to the first quadrant. But if students can memorise these values, pi and 6, pi and 4, pi and 3, root 1 on 2, root 2 on 2, root 3 on 2, they all apply in the other quadrants by measuring back from different parts. That uh, just about completes the tutorial. 
I think I might, uh, might leave it there. If you have any uh, queries, feel free to contact me. And as I said, uh, there's a link to this file in the video description. I'll include a PDF file and an Inkscape file. Oh, just one other thing, if you wanted to modify the file, of course you can click on any bit you want and press delete. I wouldn't, I'm not going to do that permanently, I'll undo that. Oh, and I almost forgot down here there's some more information. This triangle here, the 30 degree triangle, corresponds to this 30 degree triangle here. In fact I used the Bezier pen tool and drew around this triangle this uh, perimeter to produce this triangle. Now some students prefer this method of memorising or working out sine of key angles. If I start with that triangle and double everything, the reason for that is just to get rid of these denominators here. So this becomes root 1 or 1, which I realise I've left off there. So I'll just click on that, Control D to duplicate and put it there. So this one doubles to root 3. Of course, 1 doubles to 2. The angles stay the same because they're similar. And if you rotate that around, you've got your classic 60 degrees, 30 degrees triangle, the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. Yeah, so, for example, sine of 60 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, root 3 on 2. Similar with this 45 degree triangle here. That was extracted from the unit circle as well. Root 2 on 2 are the values. But if we multiply by these by their reciprocal, by 2 on root 2, we can turn them into 1s. And of course, 2 on root 2 is really root 2. We can rationalise this by 2 root 2 and root 2 on the bottom. So we get 2 root 2 on 2 or root 2. This is sounding confusing, but I think you know what I mean. Then we get the classic 45-degree uh, triangle. So, for example, cos 45 is adjacent on the hypotenuse or 1 on root 2 which we then rationalise to root 2 on 2. But uh, however you wish to use these is up to you. But uh, I'll just pan out. There's quite a few resources, even if you just want to project them onto the uh, whiteboard or you know, photocopy and hand out a sheet that uh, might help students in the initial stages of doing trigonometry, that's one way to use them. Anyway, that'll do for now. Once again, as always, thanks for watching.